Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that. We think you're on top of row. We're gonna leave you play with. Woo! Okay. You found the PowerPoint. It's a miracle. Now it's time to pay it back. <laughs> So what we were mainly wanting to do is to come here for all the cosplayers and the animators. Um, to kind of introduce LARPing. Now in our northwest area we have over 30 different LARP groups ranging from vampire to steampunk to medieval fantasy to uh, just merely a sport LARP to theater LARPs. Um, so it's a really wide range ecosystem and you guys talked about one I've never heard of before, which is cool. So maybe we can get you guys in the hood of the Universal LARP Association, as you like to call it around here. So. Um, anyhow, I'll let Tobias take it from you. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to LARP 101, our favorite panel ever. Putting the action into live action role playing. So, live action role playing is something we do, I find, to tell good story. You know, you play your favorite video game, you immerse yourself in the world. Like, I just got done beating uh, Bioshock Infinite. No spoilers, but it's awesome. <laughs> um, and in that, we get story through conflict. So to explore dynamic conflict in a safe environment. I can't, let's say, play the villain in here because the cops will rush in and arrest me. That's really inconvenient. I don't do good in prison. Um, but in a live action role playing scenario, you have a safe environment to uh, play the villain, to play the hero, the knight in shining armor, save the damsel, be the damsel, kill the damsel, whatever you want. <laughs> You're all about killing damsels. I just, I'm watching you. <laughs> Marrying damsels. Uh, you know, there have been marks where people have uh, wed, their, wed their characters. So if you got your eyes on a girl but don't want to really marry her, but want to fake marry her, oh, oh. you oh. learn! <laughs> it does happen. Exactly. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what? What is luck? Most of you know. But I'm going to read this droll statement because I forgot what I wrote a long time ago. Live action role playing can be defined as a form of acting in which participants act out their characters' actions in a fictional setting alongside other players, where the game's environment is represented by the physical world. So instead of Dungeons and Dragons, where you're rolling dice and all that jazz, uh, and you have, you know, your, your board or Warhammer 40K, you got your miniatures here. You are the miniatures, you have the world set around you, very, uh, like a, a theatrical set can be provided if, you know, you're in a higher tier LARP. Some LARPs can simply take place in someone's basement, <laughs> which happens quite often, actually. Um, so, also, the consequences of a player's actions are dictated by the game rules or player consensus. So, this kind of gets into the rule bits, which we'll discuss later. I mean, there's sports LARPs, there's theatrical LARPs, and uh, depending on what you do as a person, it's going to really uh, shoot your repercussions back at you. I mean, the villain isn't going to go without a hero spontaneously appearing to thwart him. Once more, conflict equals good story equals LARPing. Um, these LARPs are hosted by event managers, commonly dubbed game masters, who act as organizers for the game and enforce its rules. So, people like Jesse that run their own live action role playing games, and does anyone else run their own one? Yes. Bam, bam. What LARP do you run? Um, it's new, it's called Sojourn. Cool. Where is it? Eastern Oregon. Eastern Oregon, and what? What style? Uh, theme? Are you uh, steampunk, vampire, uh, medieval fantasy. fantasy? Medieval fantasy. Cool. Awesome. So, does he need to be in the movie today? No, he's too far away. Um, no. He's too far away. Foreigners! <laughs> we only cater to Seattleites here, us snobs in our coffee. Uh, that's a good one. Props and costuming. Carbon levels aren't enough. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Costuming, a physical, re a physical representation of your persona. So uh, in Rise of Esther, which is a steampunk live action role playing game here in Seattle, um, this outfit could be uh, like a light keeper, someone who's you know keeping every all the lamps running in the city of like St. Louis or something. He could uh, shoot a random persona at them. Shoot a random persona. You have a costume, what does it represent? Oh, yes, I am a uh, member of the 41st, 
Chief Army that uh, battles against zombies. <laughs> Who doesn't like killing zombies? There you go, wrong with that. Exactly, that's what I say. So, and as a, just a generic cosplayer, it gives you an opportunity to put your costumes to use beyond simply being an attention whore like myself. Um, <laughs> through getting a ton of pictures. Instead of getting a ton of pictures, you can now utilize this pauldron to ram someone into a wall. And because of this costume, and because you are all in this garb, you have this true sense of immersion. Uh, Shadow War player was here. Yeah. And that shadow board is very nervous, right? Oh yeah. Exactly. Everyone's in costume. Everyone's acting their part. Everyone is, is someone beyond themselves. And the costume is quite a big part of that. It pushes you into this new fictional realm like you would read a book. Next to this. Building alert. This is a lot more your expertise. Well it's here, uh, we we sat down and I talked to uh, a few uh, the LARP leaders locally and they were talking about you need three Ps. Uh, people, a place, and props. Um, so, <clears throat> as for a rule set, uh, Twice kind of summed it up really coolly. He said that uh, that it should be group consensus. And as long as you guys can all buy in together and have a good time playing and have fun, then you're going to be doing good. So you don't need a rule book to go play. Um, physical representations of your character and the world around you, again, props. Um, and side. The video, you got the setting. Oh, the setting. We'll start yep. with venue and then you got players. Um, when Jesse and I were chatting about this panel, we, we were kind of wondering how we could categorize or summarize the rule sets of live action role playing. There are tons of them and all of them have their very niche rule sets, except it all kind of boils down to two things. What are you trying to uh, shoot for as an objective for your players? Are you hoping for something like a sport, an athletic live action role playing game like Ampgar, Belgar, um, etc. And it has much of a, a literal sport to it, as opposed to Shadow Accord, where you will have uh, characters really acting their part. Though a sport LARP also can stay in the realm of this you know, fictional setting where you have actors and things like that. Um, and then we have theatrical LARPs, where we definitely focus a lot more on acting, character development, and interaction. So um, to, to, to kind of summarize things, we were talking about the sport LARP Meaning that you wear some type of costume and you take on some type of a nickname or persona, just a small one. Not too much. Uh, a theater lark we're coming in with, it's more like a murder mystery where you're actually interacting in such a way that propels the, the storyline to move forward for you, but at the same note, it's um, there's no action in play. So if me and Tobias and Vice Baxter, we were going to shoot each other, what do we do? We pull out pull out my gun, and I pull it three fingers, right? Yes, and we would we pull at the same time. There's no actual physical conflict. Yes. Um, here, it's uh, theatrical arts will be taken care of. Like, some do it with cards, some do it with hand signals, some you can do just rock, paper, scissors. Okay. And they're Conflict's very proud off. of it, too. <laughs> very <laughs> proud of it, yes. Uh, yes. Um, so we actually just kind of went over this. Um, so signal resolution, it's a mini game to, to decide you know, who wins. Um, because obviously you're going to have your guy want to walk in and just like, I explode the room because I am God. <laughs> <laughs> like five people in there just like, we just joined the game. <laughs> we don't even have to point. <laughs> um, so uh, to, to counteract that mechanics are normally set in place and uh, conflicts are equally resolved, sometimes by chance modified with actual like uh, experience point skill sets, depending on your point. Um, fought for resolution, and guard. Um, physical combat brought out about, brought about with boffers in order to resolve combat. Yeah. What is a boffer? That's a very good question. <laughs> boffer swords. Um, effectively, things you can beat the crap out of each other with without beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> um, so like, uh, I just keep going back to Shadow Court even though I've never been at. <laughs> Do they use uh, foam or latex? Uh, oh. Being a Shadow Court is a mix between the two. They actually have cloth covered amp guard uh, weapons, and then they have duct tape weapons, and then they go with the latex as well. And can you show us the latex weapon? Yes. So this will be this one over here. Uh, now these have been produced uh, latex wise, been going on since the early 80s. Uh, more, more primarily over in Europe, and over here in the U.S., duct tape covered weapons are more primarily more historical. 
Uh, but then F guard is using the cloth covered weapons, but they stem from there's two divisions now. F guard's light hitting, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we don't want bruiser or hurt Okay, but in do we have anybody from Dark Guard here or Bell Guard? Dagger here and Dagger here, Bell Guard and Dark Guard, they hit heavy and they add grappling to their live action role. Play. <laughs> so if you really want to get into it. You know, yeah, they, they shield bash. So everything has to be, it's like getting hit with a giant pillow fight. You like that. It's not a kind of this. With a little wrestling. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's an experience. And they're Wear armor if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> now, Dagger here, uh, spin off is Lords of the Rings Realm. So you'll have people, they call it. Lord? Uh, that's someone who's super eccentric and moving around a lot and, like, really into their role. Into the role playing aspect, yeah. So there, they don't take role. They take role playing just as seriously, but it's culturally they actually give it a new name. <laughs> yes, I know why I'm part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when when coming back to the style, I like most of all. I like to be able to hit. We came up with a uh, which we didn't really talk about this time was uh, the difference between hit location and hit points. Um, and hit location is if twice gets hit in the arm, <laughs> he loses arm and won't be able to use it. Now, if it's a hit point system, I hit him for 10 points, 10 points shot of damage, 20 points cross damage. I feel so bad for the guys who have to count this out in their head. And they go to the thousands, literally 2,000, and people are hitting for 10, 20, 40. So uh, they might hit for like 300. He called it just a dramatic death. Yes. After you've been beat down so much, you just you stop counting after 15 people have been hitting you with foam swords. Um, and you're just like, you know, this is probably a good time to go, blah! <laughs> so yeah, it works out.